Hey everyone, I'm Army Gaming. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Monster Legends. We have the latest Grand Prix going on, and so this video is going to be everything you need to know to how to maximize the number of laps you can get as a team during this team race, okay? So I'm not going to talk too much about the monster, whether he's good or not, whether he's worth getting. I need to do an updated analysis on this monster. I already made like a preliminary analysis, so you can check that out. But now that his stats are out and he's all finalized, I'm definitely going to get into analyzing Mop sometime later today. Probably by tomorrow you'll see a video. But with that being said, let's jump into this Grand Prix and let's talk about it. It's a 7 day event, it's called the Lively World Grand Prix. And let's start with the rewards. So, Switchpoint has made it possible to get up to a rank 4 monster, a rank 4 of the team race monster. You just gotta do a lot of laps. But they've also made it easier for different amount of laps you can do. So if your team manages to only do 4, you'll get yourself a Soap Sam, right? A Spongebob. If you do 8 laps, you'll get ROFL, a legendary monster. And you only need to complete 10 laps to get the new monster. And then you also unlock some keys, and then those keys can be used to get chests, which I believe you can get... Here, let me check the rewards. If I'm not mistaken, you can use those keys to purchase more additional cells of the monster. So here, let me scroll to the right a bit. Map, mop Ancient Chest. So, as you can see, we have the Team Raised Bronze Chest, the Silver, the Ancient, we have the Gold Chest. So depending on how many keys you get, you can buy different offers, which will give you 100 cells. But we don't need to worry about that right now because you're not going to get those keys until the event ends anyhow. So you have a week to accumulate whatever you want. With that being said, as we scroll up, you can see if your team manages to do two more laps, you'll get yourself a limited edition avatar, which is Soap Sam. And then still Soap Sam, but at 14, you get a rank 1. So I would recommend if you're going to get Mop, right? He's a monster, he has an evolving trait. If you're going to get Mop and your team does 10 laps, you should push for those extra four laps and get yourself a rank 1. Because it's to your benefit. 18 laps you get a rank 2. 25 laps you get a rank 3. And then if you want your rank 4. Let's scroll up. Rank 4 is at 50 laps. Okay. And so the difference between 50 laps and 90 laps. Is that you get these additional 300 cells. Which will help you rank them up to rank 5. If you want them. So you can get the last evolved trait. And what I like about this new change that Soldier Point did. Is that there is different words every single 5 lap increments. So maybe your team does 33 laps and you're like, you know what, we'll push for an extra 2 laps. We'll go from 30 to 35 so we can get the extra 25 mob cells all across the board and get this extra limited edition avatar if you're trying to collect them all. So the rewards, that's really up to you to decide as a team how far you want to go, whether you want a rank 2, a rank 3, a rank 4, whatever it may be. The position rewards, this depends on the teams you're facing. So there's always 20 laps in a single... There's uh, not 20 laps, sorry. There's always 20 teams in a single in a single like pairing of teams and depending on where you actually place overall you get different amount of rewards so for example if you get first place if you are the top one in your bracket you get an extra 80 elementium that's all of your teammates and a, a, an extra 150 an, an extra 150 elemental cells if you get second place you get 60 elementium and 120 personally i feel like the difference between first and second isn't too great that you should battle it out like crazy amounts of laps i would honestly like i would be okay with second place Third place, there is a bigger drop off. You get 40 left, 40 less elemental cells and 20 less elementium. But again, if you're gonna battle out and use a lot of resources and gems, I would rather stick with third than like battle out for second. But this is ultimately up to you. And then at the end, we always have individual rewards. These are based on how many points you yourself actually get as a team. So for example, if I look at my account right now, I have 908 points. You divide that number by two, and that's how much food you'll get. So 908 divided by two is like 454. Multiply that by a thousand. That's how much. That's how much food I'm gonna get. The max you can get is five million. And then depending on how many, what place you actually get, you can get more mob cells. You also get a silver relic chest, a gold relic chest, or a bronze relic chest. After a while, let me see. I think tenth place and above is silver. Yeah, eleventh place is three bronze. Tenth through tenth through second is silver. And then if you're first place, you get the gold relic chest. So that's how the rewards work. Personally, I think the position rewards doesn't matter too much. Just the thing you should be looking out for is agree as a team how many laps you're going to get and then just go for that. All right. So once again, I'm not going to talk about whether or not Mop is worth it. That'll be an entirely different video. What I do want to talk about is how to get as many laps as possible as a team. So the number one thing is communication. Okay. You have to utilize the team chat. You have to utilize Facebook. You have to utilize Discord. You have to be somewhere where you can communicate with your team let them know when a new node has popped up when you guys are on a new lap you gotta let you gotta communicate with your team because we'll talk about the one for all nodes these one for all quests first remember to collect 420k food completes the quest 
if if 20 of your teammates are on and everyone tries getting those points for the one for all everyone is going to collect all of their food and then if the next node pops up again it's a one for all or maybe it's a joint effort everyone needs to collect food you guys worked against your, each other because you're battling for points so don't battle for points it's always good to call so for my team it's very simple you could literally say like one for all you could say got food you can just let your team know that you're going to be doing the quest okay we always do that if we're ever doing the one for all we have a rule that you have to call it out the do your part that one's simple you literally just do your part and then i would say only call it out if it's maybe like do your part get a level six rune because that way a, a couple of your teammates aren't trying to get that level six rune maybe you say oh i got one that way you know joint effort this one you can pretty much just go at it whenever you want all members can do as much as they can to be 22 uncommon monsters you know it doesn't really pain anyone to do that so the one for all you should definitely always call you should be in agreement with your team so you're not battling against each other for points because honestly individual points don't matter if you're not reaching that lap reward you set as a team and so first and foremost communication is key the second thing i'm going to talk about is how to do some of these quests a lot easier so collecting food super simple what i like to do here let me collect what i like to do is i like to plant like five of these winged angel beans the reason i like the winged angel beans is because they give you 20,000 food and there's quite a bit of nodes that are required to get 20,000 20, food so i'm gonna do like five of these and then all the rest i like to do dun dun dun, dun i like to do the black lotus shoot which gives you 100,000 and the reason i like to do the here black lotus shoots yeah all of these are black lotus if i collect as you can see the reason i like to do black lotus is because there are joint efforts that require you to collect a bunch as a team there are one frauds that i could maybe do thanks to the fact that i have black lotus shoots this is the one time you don't need blue lotus tail you need to be ready to collect the do your part hatching is very simple typically you always want to make sure you can breed a pandakin a greenasar a treezard a firesar because there are a lot of quests that involve hatching like a common fire dragon monster um hatch a common nature hatch an uncommon monster so the reason you want to do pandakin and greenasars and what i recommend is have your hatchery right next to a nature habitat right next to your monster lab because you're going to be utilizing them a lot so i can easily place them right here as they hatch check this out placing my greenasars all right awesome click and repeat i should also be breeding over here but this is kind of on lockdown for now and then if you need cells you should definitely start extracting because you're definitely going to need them so see if i needed to extract that fire star i could if i need to extract these i could easily do it yes it only takes a couple seconds make sure you accumulate on cells because there's a lot of nodes that require you to rank up an uncommon monster rank up a rare monster and this is why you typically want to do a fire monster plus a nature monster because you're going to get greenasar or you're going to get pandakin which is a common which is a rare it's a rare fire nature or it's an uncommon fire nature monster and so whenever a node pops up that requires you to rank those up you got to have them ready for example let me show you my baby account right now because we have that node one frog first member to breed 11 uncommon monsters completes the quest so going back to this account over here as you can see if i have two my breeding tree or my or my my breeding mountain trying to do the the greenasar breed i will easily be able to just breed my greenasars and just accumulate and just finish that node so we can move on to the next one so i always recommend make sure you leave one open definitely always leave one open and then start extracting the extras don't sell them or anything start extracting them because you're going to need those cells to rank up here let's go back into the race so breeding hatching that's easy oh look first member to collect 10.6 million completes the quest if i look on here let's see two more soap sam said he'll feed ofa hail state will collect gold so now i don't need to worry about collecting gold all members contribute as much as they can to feed monsters 1.7 mil that's about to be finished two members will, must rank up one rare monster like i said that's why i have the pandikins over here now i'm pretty sure a teammate will do it so i'm not going to bother with it right now um your monster vault is a great place to also place them which is why i leave it next to my monster vault I have it right now i'm full with a bunch of epic monsters so i gotta start getting rid of some of them so that's later um whoops <laughs> the crafting i always like to have a level four ready sometimes i'll do a five sometimes a six because i know i know those nodes will pop up for feeding i like to have a lot of monsters ready to feed so for example lots of these epic monsters i'll feed when the when it's time for them when i like that joint effort that it says all members must contribute as much as they can to feed monsters i like having monsters at a low level so that i can just feed all the way to level 90 level 100 whatever it may be so they're alone for right now going back to the grand prix let's see 
See, we just had a joint effort. All members contribute as much as they can to collect 850. I had my Black Lotus Shoots ready to collect. That would have been 400k if I needed to. And if I didn't just collect to show you guys in the video, I could have actually even done that myself. Two members must, must craft one level 3 rune. Here, let's go to team chat. Done. New node. No one's called the breeding. The one for all. I'll wait a while. If not, I can do that. Just because I'm doing the video right now. Another one I want to talk about is the one that requires player versus player. In my personal opinion, you should never, ever, ever pay for skipping the node for PvP. What you should do is, number one, change your defense team and put something that's super easy to beat. I recommend on commons if you can. But something that's super, super easy to beat. You want to purposely lower your trophies. So, a, a new season just started. I purposely lost my first three battles. I literally just exited out just so I can drop in my trophies because I want to fight easier opponents. So now if I refresh, you'll notice I'm not facing any 130s. I'm not facing any war masters. I'm not facing any really tough monsters. Well, there's one right there on the far right. That's typically what it looks like in Legendary 4 League and above. So I don't want to fight any bases like that. That'll take too long. So you put on a really weak defense team so people can easily beat you. And that way you can have super easy revenge battles. Watch, if I look at their profiles... If I look at their profiles, no offense, but I could probably win within a matter of seconds. So, profile visit, level 100 on defense, easy. Alright, let's take a look at Bobby. Levels, 100 on defense, very random weird monsters, super easy to win. So if that PvP node pops up, I can easily handle it. And in that case, you should just buy attacks instead of skipping the node outright, because you'll save a lot more gems. So you should be very cautious with how you spend your gems. So PvP should be super simple, super straightforward. Um, let's see what else we can talk about. Oh, I guess the biggest one. There are going to be some nodes that require you to rank up a bunch of epic monsters as a team or to breed epic monsters as a team. Those are the kind of nodes, or maybe to do your part, or maybe it's the one for all. Specifically the one for all. If it's a joint effort, your team could contribute to rank up an epic monster here or there. But if it's the one for all, one player must rank up nine epic monsters. That one honestly is better that you just skip it entirely outright for whatever it costs because it'll it, it'll take you way more gems and time to try to breed them on your own. Because first you need to be successful and get one, then you need to spend to skip and everything, and it's just not worth it. So that is the one time you should skip. For As for the ranking up epic, honestly if you have a Dragonian Beast, he is super super cheap to rank up. He takes only 2 hours compared to other ones that take a lot longer. Dragonian Beast is only 2 hours, so I would recommend that. And another thing I would recommend, and I've, I have this on my baby count, so I'm ready. Here, let me show you that. See, my baby count, I even rented some labs. I rented some, um, what are they called? Some, whatever they're called. I rented some of these incubators, whatever. So whenever that node pops up, I can easily do, bam, 2 collects. So it doesn't hurt to be... It doesn't hurt to like get ahead of the game. Maybe you can designate some players to start ranking up a legendary, ranking up an epic monster. I would recommend that. Another thing I would recommend is that first, that first incubator. Leave that open for your ranking up an uncommon, ranking up a common, ranking up a rare, and the rest you can rent out. That way, for example, if I was to rent this out and I and I rank up an epic, here I'll just show you this. Yes, it does cost some gems. Oh, this one's 23 hours. There are some monsters that are that that are faster than 23 hours here. Let's just look through them. This one's also 23 hours. Um, let's see. Maybe a nature monster will be less. Here, let's see you. This one's only... Okay, ah, beautiful. This one's only 16 hours and 30 minutes. So I don't mind spending 8 gems to rent because when that node pops up, he'll be ready to go. And this allows me to rank up to... Um, this allows me to borrow another one. So see which one's going to be faster, which one's going to be cheaper. Because, let's see, oh no, I ran out fire maybe, earth, let's see, rank. This is another 23 hour one that costs 11 gems. So if you have nature rank ups, those are probably going to be cheaper. But yeah, that first one you can leave it open while the rest ones you rent out. That way when that node pops up, you can help your team. So there's a lot of ways to take advantage of the resources that Soldier Point has. Here, let's see how we're doing on here. Are we still waiting for the 11? No. 15 members must feed monsters with 60k. Easy enough to do. Let me find a monster to feed. I think I have some Helgudin somewhere over here. Uh, there you are. Oh, even better. So let me feed you a couple times. Make sure you have some food on you to feed. I think that should be good. Let me go back to the Grand Prix. And let's look. 
Yup, I'm good. And look at that joint effort at the bottom. All members contribute as much as they can to craft eight level four runes. So, like I said, I usually like to have something ready. By the way, whenever it's like these, like, um, the rune ones, it's not a bad thing to just skip instead of waiting one hour, especially if all of your teammates are willing to pitch in a gem. That's honestly a pretty good idea. But anyhow, with that being said, let us go back. Actually, since I'm on this account, I can see if there's any more that are pretty cheap. So this is 23 hours. I'm not a fan of that. It, what about you? You're also 23 hours. Let's try once again the uh, nature, nature earth. This might be pretty. Oh, na no, nature light. Let's try again. Epic green. What are you? Your magic nature, your dark nature, dark nature. Earth and nature, I feel like this one would be, no, still 11 hours. So yeah, look for those cheap ones that are only um, 16 hours or 8 gems. And definitely utilize the ability to rent. And then as you can see, if I rank up a common, I have quite a bit of cells for ranking up a nature. Quite a bit of cells for ranking up a fire common. I have quite a bit for the, un for the uncommon. I think I'm lacking in panicin cells, so I definitely need to get a few more. I only have 500. So be ready for that. Uh, let's click back on the Grand Prix and see what else we can talk about if I skipped any. So first member to be 11 uncommon. Like, like I said, I'm not going to be doing that right now. But very easy. Just mix fire and nature. And let's see what else I talked about. Oh, collecting gold. You sh I know it's hard right now because we have a gold fever event going on. But you should only ever collect when there's a joint effort or if you know you can do the one for all. So try to, try to refrain from collecting unless you're helping your team with one of those nodes. Let's see, what else can we talk about? The daily goals. I would recommend you save your attacks for once you have your three multiplayer attacks refilled, then collect them at the end so you can have five. That way when that one for all PvP node does pop up, you have five free attacks without paying gems. And if, and if the daily goals are about to reset, you're going to be able to get two more. So you essentially get to do seven attacks without having to pay any gems. And the one frauds usually do nine PvPs. I think sometimes it is like 13. But as you can see, you save a lot more gems. So be super smart with how you're spending your gems. Don't waste them. Just just don't waste them, okay? Be smart about it. For those nodes that involve um, rank, like getting a level 6 rune, I recommend just putting in two level or four level 5 runes. Don't try to do the 1-1-1 one, one, one rune crafting method. Keep in mind, you could probably have a bunch of chests for runes that maybe you don't open. I know I have quite a bit. Where are they? So I have 5, 7 to 10s. Actually, I think on this account, I finally went ahead and used all of my rune chest openings. I have I have 12 through to 5s, 12, 4 to 6, so I could get a couple of 5s there. So just make sure you look through your storage, see if you have any chests for runes, and just be smart about the way you go about this event. At the end of the day, you have to decide as a team how many laps are you going to for, and make sure everyone is in agreement. Make sure everyone is willing to bypass a node, especially those epic nodes. Just make sure everyone is on board with spending X amount of gems, and that way the whole team can get a level 3 plus monster, whatever it may be. But with that being said, I think that's pretty much all the advice I have for the Lively World Grand Prix and just about any single Grand Prix, any single team race. So if you guys have any other advice, please let us know in the comments below so I can maybe share it in a future video or an update video. Like I said, I will do an analysis, update analysis on MOP later today. Hopefully by tomorrow you should see the video, so stay tuned for that. And with that being said, best of luck to all of you in this Grand Prix. I will see you all next time.